The drum machine allows you to make beats by lighting up these different cubes. As a scrolling bar passes through a cube, it'll send out a signal or play a sample that's plugged in here. So I can take, say, this kick sound, plug it into this row, and whenever this row thing passes through a lit cube, it's going to trigger this sound. So I can light up quite a few and get a sound going. And then say I could take a hi-hat sound and put it in this one and put it in every alternate one. The sequencer can be expanded using this bar on the corner here. When I pull it out, I can increase the number of tracks as well as how long it goes for. When it gets big enough, you might like to know that when you touch a cube, you can see where you're at both in row and height to allow for greater accuracy. You can pause and play the sequencer using the play button here. And when it is playing, you can control the speed using the slider here. You can also control the swing using this dial here. If you ever want to mute a track that's being played as a sample, just use the mute buttons here. If you ever want to trigger the sequencer externally, use the trigger input on the side. You can also scrub around the sequencer by grabbing this thing. If you look on the back of the sequencer, you might notice that each row has an output port here and here. If you're using samples, such as these tracks, this is where the actual audio is coming from, these outputs here. If you just want the pulses, say to trigger an ADSR, uh, to control the volume of an oscillator, or something like that, use these outputs here. These outputs do not actually play musical sounds that are coming from the samples, they're just making a little pulse that can be used as a control signal. If you try to put that into a recorder, it's just going to sound like a little pop.